Yeah, I know. Well, hey guys, how we doing today? Today's journey, we are starting off our day in Sioux City, Iowa, and we're going to buzz down the Topeka, Kansas with a load of meat scraps, or AKA pet food material. It doesn't smell pleasant, let's just put it that way. But right now, we're in Ottawa, Iowa. Yes, it's time. We have traditions. Traditions here, the big dog gets his cheeseburger right before we even start our week, and then at the end of the week, he gets it. But today, I'd like to talk about something just a little bit different. So I don't know if anyone's noticed it yet, but apparently the government needs us. The government needs you. The government keeps saying, or government, everybody keeps saying there is a truck driver shortage. So a lot of people are jumping out and jumping on that truck driver bandwagon. Before you do, I want to tell you a little bit about being a truck driver. talk a little bit about the pluses and the minuses. I'm going to start off with the minuses about trucking though. Guys, it's going to change your life. You can't jump out here and think that you're going to just become a truck driver just because, well, you're going to make money. Because it's not a career. It's not even a job. It's a lifestyle. Now, before you think I'm crazy, let me explain myself how I think it's neither one of those jobs or careers, it's a lifestyle. Now, I know, it's awesome. You see these big, beautiful trucks rolling down the road, and you think, man, that's got to be cool, which it is, and we'll get to that part a little bit later on, but I want to let you know that it's going to change your world. I've covered this before in past videos. But I think it was a very old video, so I'm going to talk about it just a little bit again. You're going to make good money driving a truck. But to make those wages that everybody's promising you you're going to make, you're, going to make, you're not going to be able to live by that philosophy that says, the more you make, the more you spend, because you won't have time to spend it. Let me take that back. You, yourself, won't have time to spend it. Other people might. It's going to change your world in the wise of, it's going to change the way you are around people, it's going to change the way you are around your family, it's going to change the way you are as a person. You're not going to go home and be a completely normal human being anymore. You're going to get in a truck, you're going to be by yourself for days at end, and some of you are out here by yourself for weeks, if not months at end. You're crazy? I'm just going to say it? <laughs> I could not do it. But it's going to change you, so be prepared for that. that. That's just one example of truck driving. It's going to change your world. It's going to change everything about what you think of people. It's going to change your perspectives on how things are done it's going to change well it's going to change money because right as of right now truck drivers we don't make jack I know I just got done telling you guys oh that's gonna hurt oh that's gonna hurt Ooh, did you see that 
I thought that was gonna hurt. That almost looked like that was gonna hurt. Oh, wow, that was close. Okay, after I composed myself after that oh so traumatic incident back there by the by the on-ramp, just so traumatizing, <laughs> I remembered what I was talking about, the money part. Guys, truck driving is one of the most probably barbaric pay scales left out there. It's insane that an industry that uh, was making the same pay scale 25 years ago is still there. Companies, most companies pay their drivers per mile. That's per mile that the truck moves. Now a lot of them, some of them, decided, well, we're gonna pay our driver let's say 20% of what the profit makes, of what the load makes. That's a disaster waiting to happen. Because then you're hoping and pleading that your travel agent or dispatcher or whatever that is, is finding extremely good loads. To put it this way, Let's say you're a, you're not a truck driver. You're making you're working a job that's paying eight hours a day, or you know twelve or fourteen hours, whatever your work day is. But every single ounce of time you're at work in that building, you're getting paid. I I other than like maybe your half hour lunch break, I don't think they pay you for that nowadays. But you're getting paid. Now to be in this thing, to be in a truck. A company truck you're only getting paid per mile so you will come up to a traffic jam the minute your truck stops you stop making money when you have to stop and take a 10 hour mandatory government break those 10 hours you're not getting paid a dime not a dime I've, I've heard of some companies that will pay their drivers um, for overnight stays, stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of rare, but that stems back to the rates. As an owner operator, the rates, they, they haven't changed in years. But now, right now, they're, they're in a boom. I mean, the rates have jumped up pretty decently, but they'll go back down. I mean, you go to the grocery store and you see ever all, all your stuff there's gone up, buy a car gone up, all this stuff has gone up in prices, and you're thinking, well, at least they gotta be making money shipping it. No, not really. It, it might come up two, three cents. You're not gonna see a big jump in the wise of how much you're making per, you know, per load, per the amount of freight that you're hauling in your trailer. Like I said though, they we're in a boom. I mean, people are going out and buying refrigerated trailers like crazy because the refrigerated rates are very well right now. Will they stay there? No, no. Within six months, they'll be right back down to normal. That's, that's kind of the, the name of the game is, it goes up for a little bit, but then it'll come back down. And that has stayed the same for years and years and years which makes it to where if you're a truck owner, you really basically, you can't afford to pay your driver an hourly wage. Because could, could you imagine if truck drivers got paid an hourly wage? Let's say a truck driver gets paid 
uh, let's just say 18 bucks an hour. Well, since this is your job, that means you should get paid for every hour you're in it, right? I mean, if I have to sit at a receiver or a shipper for six, seven hours, you know, or even two hours, I, I should be getting paid for that, right? No, no, you, you'd bankrupt your trucking company you're working for. That's all there is to it. I mean, 18 bucks an hour, you know, at, at uh, well, 24 hours. I mean, you're, you know, we, we'd have our 40 hour work week done in less than two days. So be prepared for that. I mean, granted, the pay has come up. I heard there's drivers out here making 50 cents a mile, which, which is pretty good. Um, the one thing there I want you to get out of your head is do not, I repeat, do not let somebody tell you a truck driver's time is worth nothing. I used to say it. Ah, heck. I'm a truck driver. My time isn't worth anything. Guys, it is worth something. And if it's not worth something where you're at, or if it's not worth something what you're doing, if you're an owner-operator, move on. Because your, your time is worth something. It's not worth, it's, granted, it's not going to be worth as much as a person working at McDonald's, but it's going to be worth something, I hope, maybe, who knows, but it's just the rule of the, or what I was trying to get across is truck driving, the pay scale is peanuts in the wise of how much time you actually put into your into your lifestyle, into your job. And truck driving, it's about like working in a factory. We, uh, you can make a lot of money without an ounce of classroom education. Without an ounce. Now you're gonna have highway education. You're gonna learn the tits and bits out here on the highway. That's pretty cool. I, I'd much rather learn this way than any other way anyway. But you can jump into this industry and make a lot of money doing that. But you're going to be gone a lot. I mean, the drivers I always talk to you guys about, the company drivers that are making six digits a year, or even, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, they, they're gone a lot, guys. And the one thing I preach to new drivers all the time is, see those kids you got sitting right there in that picture? Like, you know, these two little munchkins I have up there? There's no take backs. Just remember that. There's absolutely no take backs. So if you're an owner operator or you're a company driver and you want to stay out here for weeks on end, months on end, and you want to make all the money you possibly can, your bank account is going to be phenomenal. But those kids you got at home, they're going to remember that. And either they're going to do that to their kids or they're gonna resent you for not being around. And I, gosh darn it, I did it again, guys. Oh. Took the wrong turn. This is the second time I've done this. This is getting ridiculous. This is all new road work down here in Council Bluffs. Everything opened up, everything's moving beautifully it's an awesome setup they did but I've missed my turn twice now so we're gonna buzz up here a couple miles get turned around come back and get on our merry little way when we come back though I'm gonna talk to you about the positive parts of truck driving because I've gotten enough of the negative out of the way I want to tell you about what I love about driving this thing what I love about being out here on the road
right back with you. doing today? Did you miss me? I know I missed you. Dad, I gotta go potty. Okay, give me a minute. bit of humidity not heat well guys the positive parts of trucking there's so many it's fun it's interesting you get to go to different places and even if you're going to the same place you get to how do you say see different things each time you go we have our selection here on what show which trailer we're gonna take. I'm just checking to see if there's any pallets in there in the wise of make a little bank on the way home type of thing. Try to find some not muddy parts to get through here. The best part is, for me at least, is seclusion. That can be a good and bad part when it comes to trucking. The good part is, I am by myself. We're gonna take you. 2826. I'm by myself, other than Mr. Opie in the cab there. But I don't have anyone else to really bother me. okay that was a hard hit 
You see anything broken? talking about isolation is I've told you guys before that I put my phone on uh, do not disturb with only my family being able to cut into that do not disturb and sometimes it goes good sometimes it goes bad but most of the time it goes good and I can go Running this stuff, I see people a little bit more often, but I can go a long time without seeing anybody. It's not too bad. I was really antisocial before I started talking to you guys. Now the bad part is, when I get home, sometimes it's extremely hard to break that habit and actually go places with Warden when she wants to go somewhere, or even I, sometimes I might even self-isolate against my family. You know, I've been home for more than three, four days. I start hiding in a little hole somewhere. And you, you shouldn't do that with your family. I'm just saying, that's a no-no. This is all you got, man. This is all you got. I have no grass. This is a no grass property. Let's go over here. Nope, just weeds. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you. Can you forgive me? This will not do, Father. We must find. We must find grass for me. I need grass. I know. I tried. That's why I'm over here is I thought there'd be some grass. Well, there isn't, you dumb beep. Hey, that rhymed. I know it did, but you should not say it. <laughs> the cool part is you get to ride in that cool truck. No matter if you have a plastic truck or Volvo truck, any other truck, you're, you're, you're gonna set higher than everybody else. That's kind of cool. I like doing that. Then I can set higher, I can see down in everybody's car, which reminds me, careful what you're doing in your car, guys. I can see you. Um, you get to, when you do meet people, most people are decent human beings. There are people that are not decent human beings and annoy you very much, but you make it work. You can. You can muscle through that. And like I said earlier, another cool part, an awesome part to trucking, you do not have to have an ounce of classroom education to actually come out here and make good money. Just remember, to make that money, you have to have sacrifices. Me, I have found a fine line. Um, it took me 15 years to find that line, but I think I have found a line to where I can run slow when I want to, but when it's time to make money, you, I can go make it. And a lot of company drivers, you can do that, but that is a perk of being an owner operator. When I want it to be slow, I, I make it slow. When I want it to be busy, I'm busy. I'm busy. A lot of sweat. 
sweat. Definitely a little sticky. Way better than a blizzard. Okay, then the next reference, the, the good part. Um, <laughs> there might not be a few of you that watch this Family Guy. It's, a, it's an adult cartoon, basically. The, the alien on there, he gets to be the decider. Well, it's kind of cool getting to be the decider. Or, not really the decider. I'm just... You get so much responsibility driving one of these trucks. Now, I'm not talking about the paperwork, the maintenance, all the annoying parts, but the part, you're responsible if someone lives or dies. You truly are. You decide if that minivan full of kids and a ticked off soccer mom trying to have road rage gets to live or die. You get to decide if the motorcycle going 140 mile an hour up the interstate gets to go around you and you don't see him but yet you catch him the last minute you get to decide do I keep going or come in in a split second you know in a split second so realistically you don't get to decide but you get to decide in the wise of um, I've had an incident where a car come out in front of me uh, I seen a kid sitting in the front seat and the mom driving I had a choice you know do I take the ditch or do I hit him well I took the ditch. I actually, I actually had a little bit of time to think about that one. So I was the decider. There's a lot of pluses. There's a lot of negatives. But if you're going to jump into this trucking world thinking it's all cherries, you know, vanilla ice cream on top of apple pie kind of stuff, it's not. There is plenty of miserable days. There is a lot of miserable days. But also on that same note, there is a lot of awesome days. I'd say the biggest drawback for me is to make the money I want to make, I am out right now, it's three nights a week. Sometimes it's, you know, last week was two nights, but three nights a week, um, that's three nights too much. But I can't go to local, well at least not yet, I can't go to local. I, I was local for five years, um, I need more of a dependable money stream than the uh, agriculture world could give me. So that's why we're hooked on to the refrigerator. Everybody's got to eat. It doesn't matter if the prices are high or low. The, the food has to move. So I need that right now. But if it was up to me, I'd probably be home every single night. Warden? She might kind of get sick of me being home every night. That's another thing. If you're going to jump into trucking, you better talk to the wife or the husband. Well, if you haven't guessed it yet, we've made it down here to Topeka. We have dropped off our loaded trailer. We hooked on to an empty trailer and we are taking this back up to Sioux City, Iowa. Nice quick run. We're we'll grabbing another one and the way it sounds, we're gonna grab another one and head back down here for tomorrow. When we get back up to the city, we're gonna be calling it a day. Let's go ahead and get on the road. Don't let me forget to stop by the casino and grab a little bit of fuel.
forget to tell me something. Maybe remind me to do something. Still plenty of fuel in it. But I did drive right past the casino. Wasn't even thinking. So now we're at Sat Brothers here off of Interstate 29 right at exit, tw exit 10. So, uh, hmm. This is going to hurt a little bit more than expected. I was expecting some nice cheap fuel instead I'm paying for way overpriced fuel and that's one of my crutches when I when I get fuel I, I'm not one of those guys that can just throw in 20 30 gallons and call it good I, I gotta top them off and then on top of that from here back to Sioux City there's not gonna be any cheaper so we're just gonna get fuel here I just wish I would have remembered just drove right past it I knew, I knew we had a lot of fuel left. That gauge always does that to me. What was it? A little bit over $700? Yeah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, wait. Uh, oh, no, no, sorry. Um, can I get... Two of those corn dogs. Yep. Uh, sometimes and I, I need uh, <laughs> receipt off of pump 25, please. Okay. That's another thing you guys got to get used to if you're going to become a truck driver. Is loud. Very, very loud. Everything is loud. Yeah, I know. I contribute to the problem with first class here. She's a loud truck. Holy smokes. You just oh. If you've been watching my channel long enough, you know I avoid truck stops usually, you know, other than fuel. I stop and get fuel, but then I find different places to park. And that's one thing you can do. You can find a lot of different places to park. There are tons of places to park out here that are not truck stops. You know, I'm an on-ramp guy. I avoid the off-ramps. But if you can get on a good on-ramp, as close to the stop sign as possible, or as close to the where you turn to get on. You don't want to, you know, bother people where they turn to get on to the on ramp. But right there, they don't have any speed, so you don't have to worry about anything. I love them. I love on ramps, especially the quiet ones. If I can find me a nice quiet on ramp, you can't get away from it. Truck stops, though, unless you're going to pull into it, not get fuel, don't go inside and not get out of the truck really really just pull into it go back into your bedroom you know it's going to be a loud stop you know if, if you but a lot of people like that a lot of people love the hustle and bustle of the trucking industry you know the, the people everywhere in the wise of you know when you pull into truck stops you know a lot of people like that me, I, I'm mixed. You know, I don't like that, of course. I'd much rather have quiet. And I get it. I get quiet a lot. Heck, even when I go to Chicago, I seem to find a place to be quiet for a little bit. <sighs> We're going to have a pretty sunset. I can see it now. We're going to have a beautiful sunset.
Okay. Go ahead. Come on. He looks chilly. He looks very chilly. All right, guys. Well, everything I said today, I didn't want to scare anybody away from trucking. I didn't want to make anybody think that trucking is a bad thing. I've told you guys multiple times, trucking is awesome, and I love driving a truck. There's just some bad things in it. And since the government and since everybody's putting it out there that truck drivers are needed, well, I wanted to make sure that before you got into trucking, you knew just a few things. There's so much more you will learn out here on the road. And even if you choose to do something like, well, like what I'm doing right now, just a little regional work, it is still fun, still rewarding at the end of the day. Just keep a positive attitude. No matter what you do, try to stay positive. Somebody cuts you off, somebody flips you off, somebody ticks you off. You want to scream at them, you want to swerve at them, you want to just bah! take a deep breath and just chill. Just, just relax. Try to at least. Alright guys, uh, we're in Sioux City, Iowa. Well, actually we're just south of Sioux City, Iowa. This is where we're going to stay tonight. Wake up tomorrow morning and we're going to do that whole loop again tomorrow. That sounds like a pretty good plan, right? It works for me. If I could get three of these this week, four would be awesome. But if I could get three of these this week, we're going to go home happy with enough money for me to be happy. As you guys have already guessed by now, I don't think I need to be rich. I know I won't get rich driving a truck because I'm too addicted to the family. So I just make enough to be happy. Well, try to be happy sometimes I'm not happy then I'm in the truck for like a long time and you guys know it because I'm usually ranting about something all right done talking I'm sure today's video is going to be insanely long because I just talk 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 that's all I did today was talk stay safe and as always I'll see you next time <laughs>